But look at what we have here. Oh my gosh, it's a clutch of eggs. Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog. How is your day going? Let me know down in the comments how you are. It's the day after my ear surgery and most people would probably be rest up and recover. But not me, I'm not gonna take any rest at all. Now my doctor actually said, hey, you might wanna take a day or two to relax, but he also said, if I feel up to it, that I could go to work or do whatever I want. So I would always listen to what the doctor has to say, but I feel pretty good. Yeah, there's some discomfort, there's a little pain, a little bit of goofy feeling. I still can't hear real well because my eardrum got perforated and it's still kind of swollen, not to mention they were in there with all kinds of stuff. But regardless, I feel good and I cannot wait to get to the shop. And I couldn't be more excited to be checking on this. Of course, Jessica is with me, which which only means one thing, baby skinks. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, it's a really pretty girl. Oh, this isn't good that there's some, these are little infertile ones. That's not good. I hope that there's some actual babies in here. Oh, please let there be babies. Come on, mama. You have to have something, no? There's oh, oh there's one. one, there's one little baby. Oh, oh gosh, look at these, a feisty little monkey too. Well, so far there's one baby. Let's see if we can find more. Is there more? Ow! Oh, <laughs> she almost got me. Sometimes they get aggressive. Oh, there's, oh, some, there's, yep, there's some more, yep, there's another one there. We got two babies. So far we got two babies. Doesn't look like this is gonna be a very good litter, but hey, we do have two little feisty monkeys right here. They look pretty healthy. Oh my gosh, so. these are healthy and feisty as could be. Oh, let's see what else we've got. Come on, mama. Gotta have more there. No, that's your tail. Oh, there's, oh, there's one. another one. All right, we're up to three. Oh, these are really pretty ones too. I'm thinking that might be it in here. All right, look at these though. Aren't they incredible? Yeah. Look at how beautiful they are. This one's nice and light. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. All right, so hey, it's not the best of litters, only three babies, but you still did a good job, mama. Don't be upset. Looks like she had a bunch of infertiles, which just kind of happened. We still have a bunch more females that hopefully will have babies, but that is awesome, huh? Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. KB skinks, I absolutely am in love with them. There's, so, look at this cute little monkey. Oh, what are you doing, silly? <laughs> Oh my gosh, are those the cutest things in the world? That is a great way to start my day. Guys, I could not be more excited. This is so cool. Take a look at this girl right here. This is a mangrove snake. Of course, a rear fang venomous snake, mildly venomous. But look at what we have here. Oh my gosh, it's a clutch of eggs. How exciting. These are the very first good mangrove eggs we've ever had. We had a clutch earlier this year that was all infertile, which was really a bummer. But this is the first real good clutch let me take a look we've got two four six seven eggs oh my gosh i am so excited i've always wanted to breed mangrove snakes so this is the very first time we've ever been successful well hey listen they've got a hat so you never want to say that they're successful until they hatch but you can see what amazing snakes they are and again i've talked about this before you know we've got some big arboreal cages that they're going to go into next door that's only four five six weeks away and it's going to be absolutely amazing as a display animal plus they are going to be much happier i think we have four females and a couple males so they're gonna have really cool cages. It's gonna be really cool. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get these eggs set up right here. And hopefully in the next 60 days or so, we're gonna have little baby mangroves. They're really cute when they're born. They're actually brown and white. And then as they start to grow a little bit, they turn black and yellow, just like this beautiful animal right here. How freaking awesome is that? But this is what happens every day. When Lori goes into the back to do whatever, these two dogs right here just sit right at the door, especially Phoebe right there. Phoebe actually cries for Lori, so let's go ahead and get Lori mad at me and let him back there. Watch what they'll do. <laughs> they miss you. I think that's much more relatable. They always miss me, but they get in the way back here. No, they're fine. They like it back here. Yeah, they like it back here. You know why? Because they like to eat tortoise poop. They like to eat tortoise poop. They do eat tortoise poop. I ain't gonna lie about that. Bunch of colubri clutches to pull today. I am excited, and I'm gonna start with this girl right here, which of course is a Western hog nose. You guys are always asking me about, like, Brian, are you gonna have some more Western? hog nose? Well, yes, the answer is look at this monkey right here. Oh my gosh. And this is the way we do these nest boxes. We do these kind of take-alongs, you know, rubber bait things. They're just easy. We cut a hole in this side. We put some sphagnum moss in here. And what's interesting is because hog nose have that shovel nose, they always seem to put like 
bedding in the bottom of it, like Aspen bedding, they shovel it in. It's such a weird thing. Regardless, look at this beautiful clutch. And she is actually a head albino bred to an albino. So half these babies should come out albino hog nose. And I think there might be another gene in there, but I'm not 100% sure. I have to look at what the breeding was. Regardless, really nice clutch of eggs right here. There's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven eggs. And one of the things that's really interesting about hog nose eggs compared to normal eggs is that this shell is super, super thin. It's still leathery, just like any other snake egg, but it's really thin comparatively. So you have to be really careful when you're picking them up. You can see how much they bend just picking them up. But the good thing is, is that candling is really easy because you can almost just see through them without even a light. Regardless, I'm going to set these up in an egg box and move on to the next. Next up would be this coral snow corn snake. Let's see what she's got. Okay, what do you got, mama? What's going on? Oh, look at that beautiful clutch of eggs. Mama, you did such a good job. Oh, don't, don't flip the eggs over. Okay, good job, mom. You did so good. Let's go ahead and see what we have here. All right, look at that. That is a beautiful clutch of eggs. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven eggs. What a great clutch. I mean, that is so beautiful. And again, those snow corns are actually a double recessive. It is aneurythristic and a melanistic albino. And then the coral part is the high pink part. So that's a polygenic where you're breeding every generation to get pinker and pinker animals. So there should be some beautiful babies coming out of these guys pretty soon. Let's take a look and see what this girl is. Oh, wow, another beautiful clutch of eggs here. Now this one is actually a het coral snow. So just like that coral snow corn, this is basically just the heterozygous for that. So it's het for snow, which means it's het for aneurysmistic and albino, but also it has that high pink lineage to it. So these guys should be really beautiful snows and coral snows and anery corals and stuff like this. And it's actually bred to a coral snow male. So it should be really good. Mama, you did so good. Thank you so much. Okay, good job. Let's go ahead and see how many eggs this is. This is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 good eggs. I mean, my gosh, that is absolutely amazing. Moving on to a het scaleless corn snake clutch. Now, I've told you guys, these typically have a little bit smaller clutches just because that bloodline seems to just have less eggs. So let's see what this girl has in here. Oh, it's not a bad clutch as far as size, but there's definitely some fertility. Can you see how that goes? As you literally go from like a coral snow where they're all fertile, amazing. You get into the het scalus and immediately the fertility goes away a little bit. Got two, four, six, seven good eggs and four slugs. Still not terrible. I mean, that's 11 eggs. That's a pretty decent sized clutch, but of course four of them are infertile, but hey, that's okay. That's just the way the game goes. Oh, and by the way, if you guys didn't know, Lori does Facebook lives. Is it once a week or when is it? Yeah, we've been doing it every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, Facebook Live. Lori does it at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it's on the BHB page. BHB Facebook page. BHB Facebook page. So go give her some heck. But she's getting ready to do that. I guess she's got some boas here that she's going to show off. I don't know. You know, I always pop in there just because she gets a little boring, you know. So I try to spice it up a little bit. God. You always got to put your FaceTime everywhere, don't you? <laughs> but it's definitely worth it. I definitely give her a watch. So, uh, all right, back to snake work. Another head scaleless, but this one is actually head strawberry scaleless, which is that type of hypo, which is a recessive mutation. So let's see what we have going on here. Okay, not too terribly bad. Looks like we've got one kind of loose egg here. Then we have all of these guys here. Again, a couple slugs, but not really that bad. It looks like we actually have two, four, six, seven good eggs and two slugs. So not bad. Let's just make sure mama's okay. Good job, girl. You did so good. She looks really good. And I've mentioned this a few times before, but you'll always see there'll be like a shed and the water dish is out. I've mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. The reason we do that is the shed is to tell us, okay, this girl is shed. She's ready to lay. And then we remove the water dish just a couple days before they're due because snakes will sometimes lay their eggs in a water dish and then the eggs go bad. So we remove it just the last couple days. As soon as they lay, you get fresh water in with them the same day that they lay. And ironically enough, here's a another het strawberry scaleless. So the exact same breeding as the last one. Let's see what this girl has going on. Is she in here? Okay, it looks like she, oh, there she is. Mama's already out of the clutch box. So let's see what she has going. Oh, this is actually a really nice clutch of eggs. Look at, there's no infertile eggs at all. This is a nice clutch. This is really good for a scaleless. We've got two eggs, four, six, eight, ten good eggs. So ten good eggs, no slugs. I love that. That is absolutely incredible. And again, she's bred to a scaleless, so about half the babies are going to be scaleless and all kinds of different stuff. The strawberries, the recessive hypo, and then there's a few other mutations in there as well. So uh, could be some really cool stuff. Six 
60 days till they hatch. Before I got out of here, Eric actually asked me a really good question and it was about snapping turtles, right? Yes, yeah, it was about if you can like take a snapping turtle and move it to a different lake or a different swamp, will that affect the snapping turtle? Will it, you know, venture back? Will it be stressed out or will it just live its life? Yeah, and basically what's happening is in his area, some people are like finding snapping turtles and they want them out of their yards or whatever the case may be. And the truth is when it comes to a lot of reptiles, and in particular snapping turtles, if you were to like move it, it may try to go back to where it's at. So what I would suggest if someone has one in his yard, make sure you try to find the closest body of water and uh, chances are it's just coming up for either breeding or it's coming up to lay its eggs or something like that. It doesn't want to hurt. Those, those snapping turtles don't want to hurt your dog. Dogs. They don't want to hurt anybody, but you don't want to take that animal and drive it like five miles away because oftentimes they'll actually try to come back and they might get run over in the road or something like that. As a matter of fact, there's even a lot of studies with snakes where if you relocate the snake, it can actually stress out and die. I've heard that with snake with the King Cobra study they did and they would chip them and they would move them and you know, a lot of them didn't, didn't end yeah. up making it. So. Exactly, I think there was like an 80% mortality wow. rate with animals like king cobras and brown snakes from Australia for relocating them. So if you ever find a snake or you find a turtle, I mean, definitely if it's crossing the road, pick it up. You don't want it to get run over, but try to put it back as close as possible. And I guess if it's kind of crossing the road, maybe you can put it on the side. On the side that it's going. Yeah, those, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Determined. yeah, they're, they're gonna determined. Gonna yeah, they're determined. They're gonna keep going. <laughs> and maybe there's a pond across the way, but do your best to kind of relocate them as close as you possibly we can uh and uh yeah i think that that yeah, covers it thank right? you that's Sweet. good all right i guess that's it all right boys and girls i think i'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here i'm going to try to make today a little bit shorter because after all i am still recovering from surgery i don't want to push it and eventually get sick or something like that i'm going to take the rest of the evening off kind of relax a little bit and continue to heal up but we're going to be back at it and in a few days we actually leave for up north i'm pretty excited about it. we get to do some fun stuff regardless i'll share that with you when the time comes i hope that you guys have an absolutely amazing day evening whenever you happen to be watching. You guys are amazing and I love you guys so much. Do me a couple favors. Hit that like button. Post a comment. Turn notifications on. And as always, make sure you're kind to someone and I promise I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>